transformation. And I'm really excited today because we just went through six weeks. The last one was Deliverance of the World. And this is an extension of the Six Step Program. Now I'm teaching a seminar. I have world-class speakers in Chicago. We're giving a seminar this weekend. And this is one of the talks that I'm going to give. And that is being able to create what's possible. Now, why are we giving that? Well, I'm talking to a bunch of chiropractors that are out there to help people get a better life, right? It's the sole purpose. You have a sole purpose as well. So what's that mean? We're a spirit on a human journey. So when we're going to fulfill a sole purpose, it means we are always going to do things we haven't done before. We're, we have a vision where we have to learn skills we haven't learned. We have to create things that haven't been created. We may be cutting a path through the world for possibly millions of people to follow. So we have to live in the place of what's possible because we're always creating. Isn't that fascinating? So if we are really, truly a spiritual being, we are first, for a spiritual being first, we are a creative life force. That's where your spirit is. Your spirit is creative life force and that's why we're here in the physical body, on a physical plane, to be able to express that creative life force. So when we have inspiration, Inspiration, the Greek of inspiration is en theos, which means in God. So inspiration and purpose comes from the depth of inside us. We talked about that in the past. The challenge is we're in our mind. And so the problem is our mind only knows, our mind seeks knowledge, it seeks certainty, it only knows what we've done in the past. And so what it does is our mind takes the known and then deduces or constructs a possible future. What's that mean? So we have future events, it takes what's known and then applies that to the future and then tries to create that in the present. Why? Because that's security and safety. That's what our mind is about, right? And so now what happens is our life becomes, in, in our mind as a reference point, be, the present becomes imprisoned. It becomes a prison and the future becomes imprisoned according to our past. So what we need to do is know that we don't live by our mind, we live by our spirit. Now, when our mind has inspirational thoughts, it's my personal belief that inspiration and theos and God comes from our spirit and then controls our mind. So we see our mind's a tool, then our spirit can dominate our mind. So I got a, my notes here because I have a quote from Deepak Chopra from Creating Affluence. Now check this out. Affluence, unboundedness, and abundance are our natural state. What? <laughs> I'm gonna read that again. Affluence, unboundedness, and abundance are a natural state. So what he's saying is limitless is our natural state. We just need to restore the memory of what we already know. See, we know that in our spirit, but maybe our, our mind isn't conscious of it. Now you think, well, Deepak Chopra, who's he? He's just a dude. Who cares? What's he know? Well, I think, okay, we could scoff at him and say that's BS. And, you know, I'm going back to what I already know. Or we could say, what if that's really true? <laughs> then what really is our potential? So I choose to believe that we are a spirit first. We are unbounded. We are affluence. And we just need to bring back to our mind. We need to re-hyphen mind. What's that mean? Re-mind. Now let's look at Wallace Waddles wrote The Science of, of uh, Getting Rich. And this was a book published in 1911. It was before Think and Grow Rich. So here was a dude who got it, and it's not the science of getting rich, it's a spiritual book, but the title is The Science of Getting Rich. So here's where science meets divinity. He says, increase is what all men and women are seeking. It's the urge of formless intelligence. What's, what's formless intelligence? That's our spirit. What's that urge? Inspiration. Inspiration coming from our spirit, moving forward into our soul purpose. It's the urge of formless intelligence within, seeking full expression. What's that mean? It's that urge of our spirit seeking to express in the physical world. Whoa! Isn't that, isn't that why we're here? <laughs> right? Like, wow! What if that's actually true? Isn't that fascinating? I choose to believe it is true. And so that means we have to live and be in a consciousness of creating what's possible. So let's go to Tony Robbins, right? One of the top life coaches in the world. I learned this at Unleash Power Within, six human needs. Certainty, what's that mean? We like to be safe, we like things that are known, that's our mind. Uncertainty, we like spontaneity. Significance, we like to be acknowledged and feel important. Uh, love and connection, we like to be connected with other people. Okay, ready for the last two? Growth, 
not only does our is our spirit creative life for us, but since we're a spirit in a physical body, a need of our humanity is to grow. So if our spirit is continually growing and our mind focuses that energy, then you're either growing in health, you're growing towards your soul purpose, or you're growing in misery and disease. And you have the whole spectrum in between. What do we choose? Okay, that's five. What's six? Contribution. Whoa. You know, that's the difference between success and fulfillment is contribution, it's giving to others, as a spiritual being. We're here to help others and other people are here to help us. And that's the difference between success and fulfillment. The reason we do Tuesday Morning Transformation is not about success, because there's a lot of successful people, including billionaires, that are successful by world conditions, but they're miserable inside. And we talked about that on the previous tapes, right? But when we contribute, we have the most fulfilling life. And when we give, See, when you give, you experience what you give. So when we contribute and we give with joy, we experience joy. So now the process of contribution and giving becomes self-replenishing. So the more we give, the more we're replenished. The more we give love, the more loving we are. The more we give joy, the more joyful we are. The more we have peace, the more peaceful we are. Right? So that means contribution is self-replenishing. The more you give, the more you have. The more you have to give, the more you give, the more you contribute. That's how you get, it. see this? That's Italian. That's how you get to what's possible, right? That's how you get there, is through contribution. Isn't that fascinating? So that's, and that's right in line with our sole purpose. Okay, check out my notes here. So it's windy, it's fall in California now. It's fall everywhere, but you know, it's not, uh, not quite as hot and sunny. So check this out. So now what do we do? How would we put ourselves in that state? Well, you know you have seven chakras, right? Our seventh chakra is our connection to divinity. It's our connection to the universe, right? We have our root chakra, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, and then we have our seventh chakra. The seventh chakra gives you access to a higher consciousness. Isn't that what creating what's possible is? Is you open beyond your personal preoccupation. What's that mean? I'm stuck on myself. People that are miserable, they're not contributing. Folks aren't contributing to others. Moodiness, anxiety, problems, means we're stuck on ourselves, right? So, so how do you get into what's possible? We do seventh chakra meditation exercises. So if the seventh, seventh chakra gives you access to universal knowledge and divinity and a higher consciousness and moves you past your problems in yourself, then how can we move into that? Well, seven chakra are also responsible for brain function, nervous system, emotions, alignment, understanding. Crown chakra, way up here. Check this out. Is the energy center, center for renewal and transcendence. Whoa, what's that mean? That when we have our energy up here and all our chakras are clear, that that's anti-aging. We can transcend and renew not only our consciousness, but that renews our body. How amazing is that? That's the most powerful anti-aging tool. I'm into it, man. Okay, I, this whole aging process, I don't really buy into that thing. You know, chronologically, yeah, that's okay. But, but we want to transcend into a higher consciousness. So what I want to do is give you an exercise to do because people that are successful and fulfill their purpose, they focus on where they're going to. People that have challenges focus on what they're going through. So if we're going to focus on where we're going to, then let's do a little seventh chakra meditation. How cool is that? So first of all, to, to clear and get to the seventh chakra, you got to clear all your chakras. So when you breathe in, imagine yourself because famous guy, Albert Einstein, pretty famous dude, pretty smart guy, said imagination is more powerful than knowledge. What if he's right? Seems like a pretty smart guy. So I'm gonna to choose to believe that, right? So we're gonna breathe. Imagine drawing from the earth up through your body and as you breathe in, energy shooting straight up. Did you also know that when you rotate clockwise, you open your chakras? So I'm gonna open my root chakra, I'm gonna open my sacral chakra, I'm gonna open my solar plexus, I'm gonna definitely open my heart, I'm gonna open my throat so communication is loving. I'm gonna open my third eye, consciousness, and we're gonna open our seventh chakra, and then we breathe. 
And it's like mercury in a thermometer, right? We rise up. Like a helium balloon going into heaven. Rise up. And push your energy up. And then hold your breath for a little bit. Let it out. But put your consciousness in your seventh chakra. So when I'm anxious or I want to solve a problem, I literally put my consciousness up here. I close my eyes. And I see myself from this perspective. Almost up in my head. And I feel the connection with the universe. And it pushes you into a higher state. All of a sudden, your body has joy. You see things. You get above your problems. Right? It's like you connect with this consciousness. All of a sudden, your body feels joy. I feel peace. I feel enlightened. I, then when you open your eyes, you look at the world differently. And you realize, I have spiritual consciousness walking through the physical world. All of a sudden, everything is beautiful. People are beautiful. I was walking out of the gym this morning through the parking lot. People are going through the gym. And I'm, I'm saying blessings to you. Peace be with you as people are walking by. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. As I give blessings and peace to other people. I'm experiencing that peace and joy. So as I'm walking out of the gym, now my body, yeah, it's a little bit tired, right? But I'm in this state and in this consciousness. Everybody they see, you want to give them a blessing. Now that's, that's how I experience my morning. I experience my morning blessed. Now we go into the day with every coaching call. It's with blessings. You know, with everything that we do, it's blessed. So imagine if you went through your day like that. That is the consciousness of what's possible. Now inspiration moves through you. Now new ideas move through you. Now the next innovative product or service or the next thing you're going to do or the next person you're going to show love to. Right? It's completely different. I want to give you one last, uh, couple last quotes. Today, I will do what others won't, so tomorrow I can do what others can't. That's why I get up early in the morning and go train. Trust me, it is dark in the morning. <laughs> it's pitch black in my room, and when that alarm goes off, I don't want to get up. But if I don't do what others won't, then I can't do what I'm being called to do. So rituals and discipline. Here's another one. Start doing what's necessary so that you can do what's possible. If you do what's necessary and then you can do what's possible, suddenly you're doing the impossible. So what's possible means you're doing what other people think are impossible. Isn't that what our sole purpose is? We're here to contribute. We're gonna change people's lives. We are here to make the impossible possible. And that's your sole purpose. See you next week.